Matthew chapter number 17. And after six days, and when you take uh, accounts of Mark and Luke, it turns out to be the seventh day. Take Peter, James, and John. There's the three that always accompanying Jesus, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart. Uh, Mount Hermon is the highest mountain. I'm not saying that's the mountain, but that's the highest mountain. And this is not the first time. Jesus goes to a mountain many times to pray to the Father. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, bright. His raiment was white as the light. Pure way. Isaiah 1 28. Though your sins shall be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias. Moses, the law, and Elijah, the prophets. There's only one division, other division in the New, in the Old Testament, the Psalms, the the the, uh, the poems. It's Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, and the poems. So you've got the scripture laid out. You've got the scripture laid out with Jesus right now. Talking with him. you got to wonder if it's Mount Oreb, Sinai, where Moses met the Lord. And you read with the other Gospels, he's talking about his death, his going to Calvary, and he's discussing with them. Even God in the flesh, he's saying, he's checking with Moses, Has I, have I fulfilled all the law of Moses? Yeah, you have. All the prophets that spoke to Elijah, has all the prophecies been fulfilled to this moment? Yes, Lord. Start going to Jerusalem. And then answered Peter. There he comes again. And said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It's, it's wonderful. Yes, it is. They're seeing something that no other man ever saw. Only Peter, James, and John could ever paint a picture of what happened here. And yet Peter writes in his epistle that we have a more sure word of prophecy than what just happened here. When he writes, a, writes the account. If thou wilt, seeking God's permission, let us make three tabernacles. One for thee, well at least Jesus is first. Give him that much credit. He thinks of Jesus first. One for Moses. Well, the Pharisees were already worshiping Moses and Abraham. The, the stock of Abraham. That's who we are. John the Baptist says, listen, don't come to me about this Abraham. I'm able to raise these stones up to be the children of Abraham. Oh, we've got Moses' seed. I never read in the Bible where Moses had a seed. So there's a little bit man worship here. And one for Elias. You know what Peter's saying right there? Lord, let's let's pitch a tent. Let's stay here. Let's live out the rest of our years here on this mountain. And you gotta ask yourself another question too. How did Peter know it was Moses and Elijah? It just wonders me. Do you think they were, hello, Moses? Hello, Elijah? Jesus might have I mean, it's, there, there's a lot to be said that well, that's not being said. Remember John said everything that Jesus would have done? In the other Gospels, we look, we learn that Peter, James, and John are asleep. Peter opens up his eye. Oh, okay. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. They said they're talking like that. I like I said, you know, the other, the other Gospels, as we'll study later, they're asleep. 
while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. All right. Forget Moses for a moment. Forget Elijah for the moment. The one, the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the one we're to listen to. Speaking to Peter, James, and John. So God testifies again as he did at, the, at John the Baptist's baptism of Jesus, spoke from heaven. God speaks from heaven again about the testimony of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I was looking for notes I got here. And, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. So the voice of God incites terror, reverence, and hit the deck. Jesus came and touched them, said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they were, had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, now here's a great three words, save Jesus only. Where did they go? Poof, they're gone. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man. No, tell the vision to no man. Don't buy a television. Tell the vision to no man. Unto the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Oh, there he goes. He just told Peter, James, and John. I'm going to die and I'm going to be resurrected and they didn't get it when the women came to him and said his body's gone the angels appeared to us and said he's not here he's risen they ran to go oh, you see nothing here and his disciples asked him saying and notice if you if you mark your Bible and and if you're that type of person Mark where Jesus tells of his death and then notice their quick reactions thereafter. Why didn't they get it? Because they're always thinking of something else besides Jesus. One time he tells of his death and, oh Lord, who's going to be the greatest in your kingdom? That's... And his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elijah must come first? Totally off the gospel. That Jesus Christ is going to die for their sins. He's going to be buried. He's going to be arose from their grave. Well, well, why does Elijah have to come? And Jesus answered and said to him, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. It's happening. Malachi 4 5. But I say unto you, uh oh, that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, the scribes, but has done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. You know, he just told them again. What happened to John the Baptist? He was killed, right? He just told his Peter, James, and John, not am I going to be risen from the dead, which means I'm going to die, but I'm going to die again. I don't mean he's going to die twice. I mean, he's told them twice he's going to die in this little conversation. He's stressing his death. Peter just rebuked him about dying. Oh, Lord, you know, please be together forever. They don't get it. And Jesus just told him that John the Baptist was Elias if the nation had received him. You see the big goof Israel made? This is said to be about 32 AD. Well, should track 2016 to 132, 
And that's how many years now they're still waiting for the come from the kingdom to come. It's been many years since they had rejected Jesus Christ. And had they received them, John the Baptist, he was already the imitation of Elijah. He would have became Elijah. And then Moses would have popped up with them somewhere along the way. All they were missing was Moses. You had the Messiah and Elijah standing together one day. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And he's the water of life and he's the bread of life. That bread and water followed them all the way to the ground to the promised land. Joshua in Jesus means Jehovah saves. It's yeah, Israel never did. They never got their history lesson. And didn't God command them over and over and over in the book of Moses, tell your children, tell your children, tell your children. Aren't we told about the Lord's Supper? It's a remembrance. When they were come to the multitude, so they come down the mountain. No one's up there but the four of them. And then Moses Elijah. There came to him a certain man, a certain man, it's only man, one, kneeling down to him and saying, look at this. If Jesus wasn't God, he was a scoundrel for letting people bow down and worship him. As the Pope does. But the Pope's not God. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. Ooh. And sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire, one characteristic, and off into the water, another characteristic. Hot human areas. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they, more than one, they could not cure him. You ever wonder which ones? wasn't Peter, James, or John, it had to be the one in nine others. And they, I mean, all nine are not going to lay their hands on this one guy. At least two of them could not do the job. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Isn't Jesus nice? One of those, a couple of your disciples could not heal my son. He turns in front of the crowd, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Talking about his disciples or this man. Somebody did not have faith to believe. And he rebukes before the whole crowd. How long shall I be with you? Uh, according to this date, not very long. One year, according to the, the date I have in the margin of my Bible. How long shall I suffer you, allow you, bring him to, bring him hither to me. Bring him here. Looks like he's upset with the disciples. Bring him here. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Now bring that devil back to the lunatic. Luna, moonstruck. You know who's out there in the principalities and powers and high places? Scripture with scripture. A true lunatic may be possessed of the devil. And he departed out of him. And the child was cured from the very hour. Matthew 9, I mean, yeah, Mark 9, 25. Jesus had no problem. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. <laughs> Come here, Jesus. We're going to talk to you alone. <laughs> Let's not do this in front of the crowd, please. And said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. So, the, so he's rebuking the disciples through the whole crowd. 
was a disciple's flaw. Somebody did not believe Jesus. And they're walking with him. They're talking with him. And what's the song say? For verily I say unto you, and here's where the, you know, the necklaces and the rings. And if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. You know, you know what the story is telling you? Their faith is not as the size of a grain of a mustard seed, which is the littlest of all the seeds. So don't think, you know, don't think about moving mountains. Don't think about these great things you're going to, we're going to start a church and we're going to get millions and billions. Of, no, you're not. You can't even do the littlest things. You don't even have enough faith to control Satan that I gave you, Jesus, telling him. And it shall remove. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. So it's possible. If we truly believed in God as much as we buy those posters, those plaques, those things that say faith. You're just making somebody rich. And they're going to have to give an account to God for their, uh, uh, their commerce. Buying a plaque of faith ain't going to give you no faith. And Jesus told the disciples, if you had that possibility, the things you can do. We don't believe God. And we don't. We may say we do. How be it? This kind, here we go, goeth not out the, the departure of that devil. It said, departed out of him. Howbeit this kind goeth not, this kind, this satanic thing, goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. And fasting is never commanded in the Bible. But you want faith? You pray and you fast. That's faith. What's that? That verse 21 is not in the Yeah, the two best MSS omit verse 21. So they're, what they're saying is, you want faith? You don't need to pray and fast. And then when they do come to you to be healed in their tent, well, you know what the problem was? You know why I couldn't heal you? You didn't have the faith. And you're going to stand before judgment before God because a lot of those people do go to those things, do have true ailments, and do believe that God can do it, and their belief has been faded by an imitator, by a deceiver. I know some. I know a few people who's gone to a healer Truly believing that God was going to it. We had a guy this weekend come to me. Oh, you know, gee, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tongue in cheek. Go ahead and pray. It ain't going to work. I'm not saying God's not going to work, but just because you're going to pray over me and lay a hand on me, and you don't even want me to preach the gospel where the gospel should be preached. And you think God's going to work a healing in you? And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. Here he goes again. They shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sad. So did they hear what was going to happen to Jesus? They heard it over and over. And yet Peter still picks up that sword and chops off the guy's ear. If Peter was really truly in fire for the Lord, you're going to come back from the grave? Yeah, I'm going to live forever. I'd carry Jesus right to the, to the, the high. Here he is. 
No, don't pay me. Here he is. Take him and carry him right off to the cross and, and sat there and watched him die. And I was going over to the tomb and waited the three days. And okay, wouldn't you? You would figure somebody after what Jesus did say would have been there the day he arose in the grave and no one was there. Don't say the women because the women were coming to finish the burial ritual. The only men that witnessed Jesus' resurrection were the soldiers placed as a, as a guard and you never see them again. They fell asleep and then they went before the the uh, the commander and said, "Hey, you know, here's the money. Tell them this story happened." And when they were come into Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to to Peter. You want me to read this section, or do you want me to just go buy it? Because I can tell you some things that you're not going to like. They came to Peter and said. Does not your master pay tribute? Hey, does Jesus pay, pay taxes? He said yes. When he was coming into the house, Jesus prevented him, stopped him from going in the house, saying, What thing is thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute taxes? Of their own children or of strangers? Do kings charge their own children, their own siblings? Or they charge people outside the kingdom? Peter says unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free? Notwithstanding, at least we should offend them. Jesus already knew what he wasn't going to do was going to offend somebody. Go thou to the sea, Galilee, and cast an hook, one hook. Take up the first, now take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou openest his mouth, it's going to be a male fish, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee let's never mind the fish story Jesus paid taxes even if there's a possibility that the taxes did not need to be paid they come up with Jesus trying to question his authority and, and trying to put him in jail is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? And the famous words he say, render unto Caesar things that are Caesar's, and render unto things that are, under, that are God's under God's. That money that we have says to the, department, this is to the United States of America Treasury Department. Jesus told them, you, you pay to the government. Jesus paid to the government. Right here. King James 1611 Bible is written right here. And yet our churches in America today don't pay taxes. You know that offends some people? You know there are towns today in America that will not have a church be built for the sole purpose is they're not going to pay taxes? You realize if you build a church and you don't pay taxes in that community, Everybody in that community is paying their property tax but you. Why do you get to hog it? When the Bible clearly says that Jesus paid. And then you go to your 1040 and you claim what you've given to God at church. Oh, I gave the dun 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 trumpet. I'm going to tell you, I'm a firm believer that if you tell the government on your 1040 or whatever IRS form you fill out, you tell them what you give to the church, that's it. That's your reward because you get money taken off your taxes that you're supposed to pay. 
Paul tells us in Romans 13, we're to obey the powers that be, and we're supposed to pay our taxes. Peter backs it up too. So when it comes to taxes, you're not exempt. Jesus wasn't exempt. You try and tell me the, the example we see in this Bible, and John tells us there's many other things that Jesus has done that's not recorded. You think when it came tax time, Mary and Joseph showed up in Bethlehem because of taxation. How's that? Taxation brought Jesus to Bethlehem to be born, to be born way the Bible says he was to be born in Bethlehem. How did God get Jesus born in Bethlehem? Taxation. So if you stand up with your God guts and, and no taxation, you are defying the Bible. This is a great illustration that Jesus has, Peter, go get a coin. I don't care how he got the coin. And go pay my tax and your tax. Interesting, isn't it? What the Bible tells us.